to have you back on to the next one now. Well, former Minister of uh, Petroleum Resources, Jezani Alisi Madoke, will not be brought back to Nigeria for trial. And speaking to Hausa Service correspondents after Wednesday's cabinet meeting, the Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, insisted that Alison Madweke is already facing charges of money laundering in the United Kingdom. And Nigeria will not jeopardize that investigation. Mm. The former minister had filed a suit seeking to be joined in a 500 million naira fraud charge involving her associates. Now she wants the AGF compelled to bring her back to Nigeria from the UK. But there are insinuations that she wants to escape from a conviction overseas since Nigerian courts have no impressive record of jailing high profile suspects. <laughs> Justice Rewan Ekawa of the Federal High Court in Lagos will on October 30th hear Alison Madweke's application. Well, joining us in the studio is a lawyer, Libero Soshoma. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Always my pleasure. Now, do you think what really is at the root of uh, this uh, desire of uh, uh, Alison Madweke to come back to Nigeria to answer to uh, criminal uh, charges of money laundering and all of that, is it because she has confidence that she's safer here than in the UK? Yes, I, I think so. Mm. I, I, I should think so because um, um, consistently uh, I, I have said this that um, prosecution starts from investigation and, and so in those societies like in the UK mm. the police would have dotted their I's and crossed their T's mm -hmm. And um, even before you are arrested, they would have done their, their job. All they just, you know, would want to do is for you to either accept, you know, or deny. Mm. But here, the investigation is, you know, not always too thorough. Mm. Maybe because of lack of forensic equipment to actually carry out some of this detailed, you know, investigation. And so... When the matter eventually gets to court, there are a lot of loopholes that a smart defense lawyer we'll you know, can expand and take advantage of. And so, like um, Ibori's case in the UK, once okay. when confronted with overwhelming evidence, and then another thing is, if you accept, and you know, um, that's in UK now, mm -hmm. and then also, you know, um, if you, your acceptance will mean that the state will not have to spend money prosecuting you, hiring counsels and, you know, having mm. to, you know. So that also will limit, will enable you to negotiate um, uh, or plead allocutors. Mm. But here, it's a different ball game altogether because you know that investigations are not always very thorough. So it's very difficult for them to plead guilty, mm. you know, and then the windmill of trial here grind very slowly. Mm. But we also forget that justice delayed it's is justice, justice denied. denied. And of course there uh, is the yeah. other issue of plea bargaining. Some are saying that if she comes back she could just uh, Take use that, that. And, and, and then go scot free. Yes, yes, because if, um, if, if the state here knows that the investigation is not watertight and they cannot get, you know, conviction uh, and then also coupled with the fact that, you know, the way, like I said, the windmill of justice here grinds slowly. So they might opt for, you know, plea bargaining if uh, she's uh, willing to return, you know, some of these funds. But over there, it's not as of right. It's not as of right because in most cases, when the evidence is overwhelming, you, it's your defense counsel now that will be pleading mm -hmm. for plea bargaining, unlike what happens here. You know, the state will be the one to negotiate, okay, if you return yeah, this. Hmm. We will, um, and, and, and so it, it says a lot about our judicial system. Negotiating from a position of weakness. Weakness. Mm -hmm. You know, so it says a lot about our judicial system. And um, um, for us to be happy that, oh, yes, we won't bring her here. Hmm. Let her face trial over, over there. there. Let most of the high-profile cases that, um, most of the high-profile criminals have been convicted, were convicted outside the shores of Nigeria. Look at the Halliburton case. Apart from Body George. Mm -hmm. Yes, apart from Body George. Um, the Halliburton case, for example, almost everybody that, we, that is involved, almost every foreigner that's involved in had that, to pay mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. had to pay for it mm -hmm. in their country. Mm -hmm. But in Nigeria, you know, we're still window dressing <sighs> the issues. And so it is sad that here, 
we just we are happy the way our judicial system is and so we are happy to you know look in the direction of foreign courts to assist us it's it's not a good sign and in the same vein you're looking for foreign investors mm -hmm. because if you don't have a judicial system where investors would have confidence that in the event that there are conflicts mm. in business transaction i have confidence that the courts will be able to resolve it. If your investors don't have confidence in that, it's not just enough to put money in your system. So the, the whole idea of uh, expecting foreign direct investment is a pipe dream as far as this is concerned. Now, this vote of no confidence on the Nigerian uh, justice system, uh, coming from not only the AG of the Attorney General of the Federation, uh, Bakar Malami himself, uh, but from almost every um, you know, uh, player in the justice system, like you said, we're, we're, it almost seems that we're, we've accepted our fortunes as far as justice fact, is concerned. 15 in judges Nigeria. are being probed by NJC right panel. Right now. Uh, uh, yes, I, I, I agree with you, but that does not remove the fact, I must also state this, mm -hmm. that you don't have good judges mm -hmm. who are daily working to ensure that the sanctity of the temple of justice is maintained. Mm -hmm. You know, we must give kudos to those. But also, the states... You know, a situation where the Attorney General almost, you know, seemingly tells you, look, we have more confidence in, you know, mm -hmm. foreign jurisdiction than here. And what are the steps, what are the panaceas mm. that the government has put in place exactly. or is putting in place to ensure that this confidence is restored, is restored. Mm -hmm. in the judiciary. Now, mm -hmm. Justice Zimba actually struck out the eighth count charge uh, that um, uh, Alison Madweke's lawyers are trying to take advantage of in asking for her to be repatriated or br brought back uh, to the country to face uh, these criminal charges. Is this a master stroke on his part by striking out that particular eight count charge or eighth charge, actually? Uh, you, you, you know, eight count charge. Eight count charge, yes. Uh, you, you see, uh, the I issues are. It is not enough to say you file charges. Like I told you, mm -hmm. it starts from investigation and what is the position of the law as regards those charges. And then also in criminal cases, mm -hmm. the accused must be present. It's a statutory requirement that the accused must be that. present all through trial. Mm -hmm. And so if you file charges against an accused person, who is not in court and who over time had not been produced in court, there is no way that court will hear, you know, that matter. Mm. You know, people should also know that. And so what, because the doctrine of fair hearing, mm -hmm. you know, also detects that the person that you're charging must be present mm. in court and must also listen to the accusations against, you know, mm. that against him or her, so that we have opportunity at every turn to either accept or rebut, mm. you know, and then also, if it's, even if he has representation in court, he or she or she must be present also in court, mm. you know. So that's why, in matters like this, the, it is easy for you know an accused person to say, look, this matter, this funds, mm. you know, concerns me. Mm -hmm. I want to be part of this case because whatever is determined in that case will affect me either directly or indirectly. Mm -hmm. And so I need to be joined, you know, as a co-accused person in this case because I have a say in it. And my name has been mentioned. My name has been mentioned in, in almost all the transactions. Yes. You know, so that's also a, 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 a dilemma because if the other accused persons, if their defense is that, you know, we took instruction from this person you are currently trying, who is currently standing trial in the UK. Mm -hmm. And so for us, for you to truly determine this matter, that person must has be here to, also, has mm -hmm. to be produced. Because we didn't do this alone, then you, 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 you're, you're mm -hmm. going to run into murky water. So when so the idea could of bringing her back? the yes. effort of, this, of the trial? The yes. And make you, the you, you, you call it um, technicalities, but it is the position of the law. And, and so, in as far as the position of the law is concerned, sometimes, you know, we, because we, the word technicality is overflogged and overused, <laughs> you think, oh, it's, it's, it's just a technical point. But if it goes to the roots of, of the matter, then it no longer becomes a technical point, but it becomes, you know, a statutory provision that must be abided by. You know, in the so courts. in this case then, what happens to uh, the case against uh, Jide Omokore? Uh, which is part of 
you know, the reason why Alison Madwake is asking to come back and to have her day in court. She's talking about fair hearing. Uh, Abuakar Malami, the AGF, is saying this is not a case of fair hearing. As a matter of fact, it's not even in her place uh, to pray uh, to be returned to the country mm. to answer to these questions. What, what, what do you what make I'm of saying, it? What I'm saying is, if in investigating the case of um, um, Gideon Mokore now, mm -hmm. The, the investigation or the defense will take you to the Ziani having to answer questions in that charge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then, at some point, you know, the court is going to look into Jide's defense also to say, look, are we, I, uh, it, it, let, let's assume you say, my defense is that I did act alone these instructions were from this party who is not here mm -hmm. and this was from this party who is not here and this i did this in you, you know um cooperation mm. with with you know somebody who has instruction at that time mm. to so do I, and who I was, has the past who has the powers to give too. such 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 instruction mm. so at the end of the day what's go likely going to happen like the issue you raise you know you're not going to have a technical point of law you know, being raised, you know, at that point. Are you bringing the person back here, mm -hmm. you know, as a co-accused person? Mm -hmm. Or are you going to leave, you know, that point hanging? In which case, it might go either way mm -hmm. in court. So the question is, that's why, for me, there's need for us, like yesterday, to take steps to begin to reform the legal system, the legal jurisprudence here, and mm -hmm. find a way of bringing back that confidence mm -hmm. that no matter your position, no matter your status, once you're standing trial here, if the investigation is watertight and at the end of the day, there's confidence that you know, justice will be, will be served and mm -hmm. must be served. But because of lack of that confidence, so it becomes very, very easy for people to say, bring me to Nigeria. Nigeria. Because you know if you get there, you will um, you go scot-free. But let me also tell you, like the case of Ibori that mm -hmm. we, you know, we always make reference to. But it is a notorious fact that that case went to the Court of Appeal Benin. And the Court of Appeal Benin did rule that the matter should be remitted back to the Federal High Court for retrial. Mm -hmm. But that never happened. Mm -hmm. That the federal government, for reasons best known to them, just slept on their right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so there's need for us to begin to take steps. Recently, again, judges are appointed. The question you should be asking is, how are these judges appointed? appointed. Hmm. You know, how are they appointed? You, there are good Which ones, there are bad ones. Yes, yes, today, today, during today. Our discussion, know, yes. So how, how are they appointed? Hmm. Provisions, the requirement is, oh, you must be 10 years post-call. There are cases where some people have, um, in, in Lagos even, where some people have objected to some persons being appointed as judges. judges. There were also, if you remember recently, where some persons were nominated as judges, there were barrage of petition against one particular lady that she was um, debarred in the UK, and that she's back here wanting to be a they judge. judge. You know, so how these people are, are, so if you have people of questionable characters, you know, sitting as arbiters, sitting, you know, uh, as judges in the temple of justice, mm. then the type of justice that is dispensed mm. becomes questionable. Mm. You, you know, mm. so that's where you start from. And then also those the people that are investigating your matters, your criminal cases, how well trained are okay. these people? Not to frustrate the which is that's always why at the AFCC root of yes. indeed has lost so many cases. cases uh, you in know, the so past. it's mm. not it's not enough to you know go to town. So we've arrested this person who is told so much, mm. and then when it comes to you know proving beyond reasonable doubt because of evidence. exactly because mm -hmm. the courts the, the the constitution says even if you are caught red-handed mm -hmm. you are presumed innocent and, and, too, and so too it is the mm -hmm. onus is on the man who is alleging to prove beyond reasonable, reasonable doubt. doubt and the reasonable doubt is what goes on in the mind of a reasonable man mm. If All right. a reasonable you, you know what, let's, let's put you on hold. We'll, we'll get to find that out <laughs> as quickly as we can. Hear from Foladele okay. and what the people are saying. Folly, welcome back. Welcome good back. Good to see you again. <laughs> to me. <Yes. laughs> um, hi, Liberals. Good morning. You, good morning. Okay, so let's get into the reactions. Believe me, people are talking. Moritella says, Dear Attorney General, kindly overturn any attempt to bring Dezani back home to escape justice. EFCC should co-op with their UK counterparts. 
Shalom Miriam Shehu says, why is EFCC blocking Dezani Madweke from coming back to Nigeria to face trial? I don't understand this war against corruption again. <laughs> Kule Obi says, she is more valuable as a propaganda tool. Let me take you up on this, Liberas, shortly. Mm. Bolore says, apparently Dezani wants to come back to Nigeria, but EFCC is stopping it. We don't want to collect our billion, zillion, gazillion dollars. And that, there's a sarcastic emoticon mm. there. Babatunde Aremu says, Dezani is just deceiving herself. She will be prosecuted whether she likes it or not. Mr. Stanley Wambia says, imagine the FCC wants to continue using gist of Dezani's recovered loot to keep fooling gullible Nigerians till 2019. Oh, yeah. Deji says, EFCC and Madam Dezani be monitoring each other's moves like Tom and Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so Libra, someone says there that um, um, Dezani is just a propaganda tool. What do you think mm. about that? I, I don't think mm. so. I don't think it's a propaganda tool. Um, it's obvious, it is, um, it's, it's a notorious fact that there are allegations, there are grave and grievous allegations, you know, of um, the sleaze that were committed under her watch, you know, as Minister for Petroleum. You know, and like a lot of people had said also, you know, it is shameful that the people that should be asking for her to be brought back mm. to face charges here, are the ones saying no, 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 stay no, there, keep her stay there. there because we know the way our system works mm -hmm. here, you know. So I won't blame them, you know, I won't blame them for saying keep her there because we know the way it works here. But also, in the same vein, the fact that we know how it works here, what are we doing? What steps are we putting in place mm -hmm. to ensure that there is no repeated occurrence or you know, in few in the near future? Is it that I, I didn't be that the Zani were in Nigeria? what would have been, you know, mm. the, the fate, outcome, the outcome of the matter to today. But for this particular case, since we haven't sorted out, you know, our system, for this particular case, don't you think she should just stay there? That's what I'm saying. Yes. So for this particular case, let her remain where so she we is. Sort it out. Even, even, even the UK will not release her to you if she's facing trial there. Mm. An offence had been committed in their jurisdiction. They would want to see to the end mm -hmm. of that matter. And moreover, there is no statute of limitation to criminal offense. Mm. So if the charges are not the same, if the charges so you are don't not have the double same, jeopardy. Yes, so mm. that there won't be double jeopardy. If you finish serving jail term there, you come back here, there's another one waiting for mm. you here. But that wasn't what we saw uh, with uh, James Ibori. Thank you very much, uh, Paladini. <laughs> so I, I just told that. you about the James Ibori's case mm. that even the Court of Appeal, Benin, mm. that 173 count charges yes. that were quashed by Justice Maswe and mm. Wukule, the Court of Appeal, Benin, did overturn that decision and ask that the matter be remitted to another judge for retrial, but okay. the federal government never did exactly. that. All right, let, let's uh, <laughs> take a very quick break, and when we come back, we'll continue this discussion. Stay with us. Glad to have you back. We still have Liberos Oshoma with us in the studio. He's a lawyer. We've been talking about uh, Diazani Alice Madweke's uh, uh, call to be repatriated to Nigeria to face trial here, but EFCC is saying no. Stay there and mm. carry your cross. In London, <laughs> thank you for staying with us in the studio. Now, uh, there is a kleptocracy uh, tour going on in London uh, uh, by some human rights uh, members there. Uh, it focuses on Nigeria, really. It's called kleptocracy mm. tour Nigeria, uh, spotlighting buildings uh, bought with uh, fraudulent wealth uh, from our country over there. And Diazani has been fingered as well. Some of the buildings belong to her and another yeah, popular person. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly, anyway. <laughs> so uh, talking about the need for her to face trial there, and then uh, her co-conspirator, alleged <coughs> co-conspirators yeah. facing trial here in Nigeria. Since the EFCC is somehow in conflict with the government over there, is it possible or even permitted by a law somehow to maybe send the co-conspirators <laughs> over there since they have been accused of uh, laundering money for her abroad as well. Um, if um, if um, two things, it borders on diplomacy and um, also uh, it borders on the integrity of your institutions here. Mm. Um, if, and then thirdly, if the charges are charges that can be sustained in the UK, but then, why would you want to send an accused person that you're already prosecuting here 
who's already facing trial mm -hmm. in your criminal justice system that you're trying to prove to the world that look you know you've dusted up and it's above board to some extent why would you want to take that person and say look no we don't have confidence in our system let us take him abroad for trial since the offense you know is a trans jurisdictional mm -hmm. offenses you know so what that means what you're in, impliedly telling people even your citizens is that look two things is either the offenses were not even committed here in the first that place. you can't you know prosecute here and you know if you prosecute you will not get conviction conviction or that you don't have confidence in the your system. system as an attorney general and as an attorney general you don't have confidence in in your structures here and you still retain your seats mm. you, you know so it's not something that um, government would contemplate at all you, you know so the way it is now government can hide under the fact that if i were the attorney general i wouldn't even say no uh, we don't want to jeopardize which I is what he's saying. saying. We don't say, want to jeopardize the investigation. Say, investigation I would say, rather, I mean, same thing, but in a different way, that our investigation here, you know, we have our investigations here bordering on, you know, charges that do not have anything to do with the United States government. Mm. And so it is a practical impossibility for the United States government to release her to us. Or the UK London, government. Uh, to, London, so the, UK. the UK government mm. to release her to us to come face charges here since he's already facing charges there. Mm -hmm. When they are done, then we will, mm -hmm. take, then it we will take it from there. Okay, so now this... With uh, that, it sounds more diplomatic. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm more believable than when you say, no, 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 stay there, and stay there. And even saves this trans judicial judicial system. Yeah, yes. transnational mm -hmm. alleged uh, crime, crime or yes. money laundering or whatever it is, how doable or how strong is that agreement between Nigeria and countries uh, like the UK, the UAE, even the United so States and the rest of them. Well. Um, because some are saying, look, why don't we just go beyond this agreement that we have uh, as to you know, bringing back the funds, the stolen uh, funds to Nigeria? Because look, there's no guarantee we'll get all the funds in the first place. Why don't we prevent, other than begin to run around yeah. to get these funds back? Yeah, yeah, it's put first, systems in place first and foremost, that will make uh, it almost impossible. Now, the same Dezani we're talking about, the same uh, NNPC, now there are issues yes. mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. You, you, you so see, there's something wrong with the systems and not necessarily yes, the individuals. Yes, uh, first and foremost, um, I blame you know, the United Kingdom government you know, for allowing, although there are steps now, that's mm -hmm. why it's difficult for, that's why you see a lot of buildings springing up in um, Ikoi and Abuja because some of these funds cannot be taken abroad. Oh, mm -hmm. So they will have to invest it in properties here. You, you know, but then the government in these countries allow, you know, funds, stolen funds from Africa. They warehouse most of these stolen funds, you know. So if you, they, they tell you that you must declare any amount excess of 5,000 pounds, mm -hmm. But if you get, once it is declared, once that fund is declared, the next day banks are writing you letters, you know, over there on mm. how to invest these funds, mm. you know. But until recently, you will be investigated. What do you do? You know, how did you end this fund? Mm. You, you know, and then what are you coming to do with it here? You know, so that's, that's on one side. And then secondly, the way government is run here, nocturnally not transparent so everything is in secret and the structures here you don't have structures to monitor and enforce enforce laws and values mm. and the appointment processes also political appointment most especially it's about once somebody is appointed whether he's competent or not mm. will celebrate such persons and then when once you get to office because there are no systemic way, recognized and entrenched systemic structures of running things and then also checks and balances mm -hmm. in those offices, it becomes easy for even like the same NMPC, yeah. Ibe Kachuku is alleging mm -hmm. that the um, MD had awarded contracts above his limits. Mm -hmm. You know? So, Unilaterally. Exactly. And so when these were the same things that were happening before now, that's how 
the former MD was able to warehouse you mm -hmm. know, such dollars. Mm -hmm. And the same way the former minister, Desiani, was able to acquire so much. Mm -hmm. And I, one would have expected that as soon as this government came on board, with the cry of, oh, corruption, corruption everywhere, mm -hmm. the first step you take is what makes you know, corruption possible in the first place. In the first place. What makes it possible for you to take out funds from a easily. system easily? It seems to be a template. Yeah. yeah. So what structures are we putting in place to ensure that it is almost, you know, impossible mm -hmm. to do such? And are we also, what monitoring structures are we putting in place that if at the end of the day you are able to do it, mm. you know, immediately the system of law will be activated against you and you'll be dealt with primarily and summarily mm -hmm. but all of this from what we can hear now are not in place mm. and so that is why it's easy for people to see award contracts unilaterally you know, in spite of the tsa and, and and so tsa as good as it is it is a system where funds are mm. you know warehoused in, in spite one of pool. tsa in spite but, of the so the body language of mr uh, president uh, uh, body language for me body language is more that body more, language seems to have been long gone. propaganda mm. and and so TSA is more of, you know, a, a warehousing pool, a common pool. But contracts that are awarded, you know, what are the due process? How are the due processes monitored to ensure that, you know, the processes for awarding this contract are strictly followed? Mm -hmm. And then also that the contracts are not over invoiced. Mm. Because these are ways you, you know, you manipulate the process to yeah. steal. You know, or when you have all of these structures in place, it becomes easy. And then also there's need for us to monitor you know the lifestyle of public office holders mm -hmm. government needs to do that so that the moment you begin to live above your means you get to ministries you see you know civil servant palm sec with you know tattered suits but they have properties everywhere and, mm, you yeah, know true. and so what now we have bvn how well are we using the bvn mm -hmm. to, to, monitor. to monitor the accounts of you know these officers and their relations, like um, I learned recently that the custom DG has said, look, mm -hmm. every officer of the custom yes. needs to, you know, drop their BVN. At the end of the day, it, seems it boils down to political will, really. No, it's the political will, mm -hmm. really. You, you, first and foremost, when people talk about restructure, restructure, we also need, it should start from a, a system of governance. And, and, and that's the only way you can put structures in place. Because otherwise, this anti-corruption drive will be reacting. And we will not hear how much have been stolen from this government until the exit office. Mm -hmm. And until the, the next same government way. comes in. Yeah, and just then the same you hear of which we didn't know how much of was that. stolen in the last administration yeah. until the exit office. All right. Thank you very much, uh, mm -hmm. Liberos Oshoma. You're a lawyer. Thank you for your analysis at this time. My pleasure, Liz. Mm -hmm.